All right, we're going to be looking at another um, reaction where we decide, uh, you know, what is our base? Um, you know, is it strong, weak? What about the nucleophile as well? Uh, and then the reaction after that, and then the mechanism for it. Okay, so uh, you know, we've got this this ring here. Um, looks like it's got two substituents. Um, one of them is a halogen, which we're going to be looking to remove with this reaction. Uh, we've got our our base here, and uh, looking at it, um, if you've seen one of my previous videos, um, you'll know exactly what I'm going to say, and it's going to be that this is an Na plus um, with a negative OCH3. Um, so this is going to be a very, very strong base. And since this is a strong base, we're going to have an E2 or an SN2 reaction. Um, so now let's look at the molecule and see what we got. Um, we know that this is bonded to a uh, secondary carbon here. Um, so that means that we can have either SN2 or E2. Um, both of them still apply. Uh, except um, for me, uh, I usually try not to perform SN2s on rings um, because this is pretty sterically hindered in there um, for this, this to come in and, and do a substitution on this back side. Um, you know, you're going to have a tough time of, with that happening. I mean, I'm not saying that it won't happen. Um, but definitely um, not as much as the, the E2 uh, reaction that will occur here. So um, let's look at an, let's look at the E2 mechanism. Um, we know for E2 that uh, this acts as a base and it deprotonates the adjacent carbon. Um, one thing that I haven't talked about yet is that not only does it deprotonate the adjacent carbon, but since we have a stereochemistry indicated, it um, it's the co anti coplanar um, or proton that it deprotonates. So if this is our Cl here. The hydrogen that we're going to remove is going to be this one right here, um, not this one. So looking at it on Lewis projection, um, you know if you've got these H's here, you know let's say that you've just got a methyl in the background. You've got this H. Uh, this right here is going to leave as as this one forms the bond and is um, and is taken by the base. So that's what that's what you're going to be looking for. So let's look at the adjacent carbons that we have for this. Our two adjacent carbons are going to be this one and this one. Uh, now these are in our these are in an axial. Um, I'm sorry, equatorial position. One is up and one is down. So what we're going to have to do is, we're, like, we would have to, um, you know, do our boat conformation, change our, or sorry, um, change the chair conformation. And when we do that, uh, what we'll see is we'll see that these two um, move to opposite uh, axial positions. Um, so what we'll be looking at, if we draw another Lewis projection. Is, uh, is this right here. This is going to be in the background. With, uh, see, it's going to have just, just one hydrogen. That's going to be blocked by this Cl here. With the other two hydrogens. All right. I guess this one would only have one hydrogen as well. Either way, um, this is what we're looking at. Uh, so what, I, what I'm trying to get at here is the fact that um, you can't eliminate from this side because you don't have a hydrogen in this anti-bonding position. What this leaves you with uh, is just this one just this carbon right here. So, um, what our mechanism is going to be is uh, you know you've got these two carbons or these two hydrogens hanging off here. You've got your OCH3 just hanging out here. It's 
It's going to come up, snag this hydrogen. This electron's going to move over here. And that's what you're going to be left with. Let me draw that double bond a little more clearly. There's your product for this.